the how to solve systems of equation uh, word problems. So what that will mean is that you will have two different sets of information you're trying to find. So you're going to be trying to find two different variables. And in order to solve for two variables, you must have at least two pieces of information um, that usually comes in the form of two equations. And then before I start the lesson, uh, I need to make sure that you guys are aware of something. So in announcements, I made an announcement this morning. I was told to make this announcement. So I just wanna make sure that it's on this video. And so this is only for virtual Algebra 2 students. So if you come uh, to Truman during the day, just ignore this part of the video. Um, but if you are Algebra 2 virtual, which most of you that are on this call are, um, you need to take the time to sign up for a time uh, using the Google form right here. And so you're gonna be taking the first unit test A. Um, I guess they want you guys to take this here at the school. And just remember the last day to sign, or the last day to take the test is October 5th, and it's worth um, quite a bit of your grade. So make sure you uh, sign up for a testing day. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, or maybe that doesn't work for you, I would just contact your administrator of your school and see what they could do for you. But this is what I'm told to tell you is that there is a test um, and you need to come to the school to take it, which days use the form to pick a day. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. And so the goal is that students will be able to analyze and solve verbal problems whose solution requires solving systems of linear equations and two variables. And so let's start off with the health club. Okay, notice these two different health clubs, uh, we'll just call them club A and club B. And just like here in Independence, there's different places you can work out. And which one's better for you? Sometimes that just depends on more variables than just cost. So like, I have some friends, um, they pick their gym based off people that they go with or maybe the programs that are there. So in a simplified problem like this, let's just assume that the clubs are the same. So first, they want us to write an equation to show the cost of each membership at club A and club B. And notice club A is here and then club B is there. And so, um, in order to set an equation, and I'll go ahead and just put club A and club B down. And so gyms are gonna charge you a startup fee, um, and then they're also gonna charge you something per month. So the per month, that's gonna be our slope because that's our X. And then our um, constant is gonna be, what do they start us out at? So let me go ahead and just put X plus B. And we'll figure out the slope here in a second, but club A starts off charging customers $50. So there's a $50 signup fee. Club B, they start at a higher rate. They charge $75. And so what we're trying to find is um, what their cost per month is. So let's go with club A first, club A. And then let's try to find another coordinate that is easy to count like this right here. I don't know, that might be 60, 62. It's hard to tell for sure. Um, here, that could be one and a half months. It's hard to tell. So you kind of want to choose somewhere that's like slightly below 
you want to choose somewhere where it's like exact. So right there would be an exact spot. And so we could do rise over run. So it went up how many dollars? Let's see, it's 25 each, right? 25, 50, $75. So they went up $75 over how many months? Five months. So 75 divided by five, 15. So I just found that Club A charges $15 a month. Right. Club B, starts at 75 and then that would be the next number that's easy to count and so they charge an extra 25 50 dollars if i'm doing rise over run over so 25 50 one two three four five so they're slightly cheaper they only charge ten dollars a month okay and now I see the box where I could have placed those. I'm not going to take the time to rewrite that. And so the question may be, um, what is the number of the month when the total cost is the same for both clubs? So if I gave you these two equations and you solved by graphing, you would graph them and just see where they're the same, which if you look here, you can see that they charge the same amount. They will both cost $125 total after five months. So then the question may be, okay, which club should I pick? Well, if the clubs are equally, equally the same, my suggestion for you would be from here to here, that's club A. If you know that you're only going to have the membership for five months or fewer, then I would go with Club A. Okay. If you're going to be dedicated and keep going after five months, then you should switch. You should start off with Club B. So really the answer to this question, which club should I pick? It, it depends on how long do you plan to keep your membership? Okay. If you just want to try it out, I'd go with Club A. If you're going to be dedicated and go a lot, I'd go with Club B. Okay. And then in the long run, you're going to save tons of money with Club B if you keep this membership for a long time. And so it was actually worth paying a higher startup fee. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm going to skip a few examples just for time's sake, just to make sure I show you one of each. Um, so this is more so what word problems will look like. And um, the hardest part is setting these up. So the first thing I always do is read the question. The total attendance at a school play was 850. So that means 850 people went to this play. That's a lot of people. Um, they, the tickets for senior citizens were $1.50 each, and the regular tickets were $2 each. So what that means is, I guess, kids and adults were all $2, but if you classified as a senior citizen, then it was only $1.50. If the total receipts were $1,650, how many tickets of each kind were sold? So at the end of the day, after 850, 850 people went, you made $1,650. And for some reason, you're curious how many um, senior citizens attended and how many non-senior citizens attended, okay? So we're trying to find how many tickets. So those are our variables. Um, I'm just gonna use X and Y. 
uh, just to be consistent. You do not have to use X and Y. So let's let X be the number of senior citizen tickets. And then let's let Y be the number of, I don't like that word regular. It's kind of a weird word. I mean, just because you're, I don't know. I guess we could put regular. That's what the word problem calls it. I don't think senior citizens are irregular. So the first thing I know is that this could have been all senior citizens that attended. It could have been all regular uh, tickets uh, sold. So that would be non-senior citizens. Um, it could be half and half. We don't know, but we do know that they add up to 850. So I would say X plus Y is 850. There are many different combinations that will make this true. 850 and 0, 849 and 1, 848 and 2, 847 and 3. And so until we know more information, we can't solve this. Thankfully, they told us more information. They told us the cost of senior citizen tickets were $1.50 each. So you take $1.50 times the number of senior citizen tickets. So if I sold four senior citizen tickets, that'd be $1.50, $1.50, $1.50, $1.50. And then um, regular tickets were $2 times the number of those sold. And our profit or our sales equation, I guess you could call it, we made $16.50. So I set up the equation um, from here, um, there's nothing new. Uh, we're going to solve. And on a problem like this, you could use elimination if you want. You can multiply this, say, by negative 2 and make that negative 2y, not positive 2y. I personally think that um, it would be easier to use substitution. So I'll take this equation and I'll solve for O. I'll solve for y. That'd be y equals. 850 minus X. And all that says is to find the number of regular tickets, just take 850 minus the number of senior citizen tickets, which makes sense. And we're going to plug this in for Y. And I get $1.50 X plus two, 850 minus X. And then from there, that's review. Okay, so all I did was I took, I solved this for Y, solved that for Y, and then substituted it in. I used substitution. So from there, I'll go through this part a little faster on purpose. Two times 850 is what? 1700, my brain isn't on yet this morning. Yep. And then 2 times negative x minus 2x. From there, we have $1.50 minus 2 would be negative 0.5x. And then I would subtract 1,700 from both sides. Minus 1,700, minus 1,700. 1,650 minus 1,700 would be what? Negative 50. And then I would take negative 50 divided by negative 0.5. And I get 100. Okay. 
100 what? Well, that means um, 100 senior citizen tickets. So I could say um, 800 or 100 senior citizen tickets or sold. Now to find the amount of non-senior citizens, I would take 850 minus 100 be 750. And 750 regular tickets were sold. Now it may not be a bad idea just to check my work. Um, I already know that those two numbers add up to 850. That one's easy. But if I take 1.5 times X, which is 100, and then I add on 2 times, and I say there's 750, I should get 1650 in my calculator, and I do. So I know without a doubt I'm correct. Um, are there any questions so far? So the three people I see are shaking their head no. But if you do have a question, uh, feel free to put that in the chat box. All right, let's do another one. Troy has 25 coins and dimes and quarters. The value of his coins is $1.60. How many dimes and nickels does he have? Now there really honestly is nothing keeping you from sitting there and guessing. And so what I mean by that is you could say 25 dimes, zero nickels, 24 dimes, one nickel, 23 dimes, two, uh, two nickels, 22 dimes, uh, three nickels. And you could sit there and go through, um, what would there be, 25 combinations and get the answer that way. And I could tell you for me, if, if that's how you want to do it, go for it. Um, if that's what makes sense to you, it's just going to take longer than using actual algebra. So instead of sitting there and guessing, we're going to set up two variables. And the key here is how many dimes and nickels does he have? So that's what we're looking for. We'll let X. Um, actually, let's let D. Let's let D be the number of dimes. If it bothers you using D, you can use X. Um, and then let's let N be number of nickels. And so you may ask yourself, why does he only have dimes and nickels? Because anybody who has a uh, what do you call that? A piggy jar knows that most of what's in a, a piggy bank is pennies. And the reason why, um, to keep it simple for high school math, we're only going to do two variables. But if this was more complicated, then yes, um, we would include quarters and pennies. But we're just going to assume that this is all he has, dimes and nickels. So maybe this kid, Troy, he only likes dimes and nickels. So anytime he gets a quarter or a penny, he gives it to his sister or something. I don't know. That's all he has. Or maybe he spent all his quarters and pennies already, and this is what he has left. So I know sometimes these word problems don't make any sense. Um, like, why does he only have dimes and nickels? Well, just, just to make it simpler. So he has 25 of those. Okay, we don't know how many dimes and nickels those are, but the equation would be D plus N is 25. And then the value is $1.60. So if I take, um, let's see, dimes, the, the value of dimes is 0.1. They did not tell us that. They assume we know that. And then the value of a nickel is 0.05. And then altogether, he has $1.60. So this problem is just like the other one, um, just for sake of time, 
and to show you more examples, I will let you finish this one yourself, but it looks just like this one. So I would do the same thing I would solve for X or Y and substitute it in. On this one, I would substitute for D or N, or I'm sorry, not, not substitute, uh, isolate for D or N and then plug in to the other equation. Okay, so we'll just set this up and then you would solve from here. This is most likely our last example. Um, Angela, uh, she wants to go to the amusement park for 4th of July. Um, she has, she could go to Play World or another place called Great Action Park. Um, Play World is $12 a day plus $2 per ride. And then the other one is $2 a day plus $4 a ride. So sometimes what I like to do is highlight, let's see, Play World is $12 a day, $2 per ride. And then Great Action Park helps me keep things straight. And then let's see, this is orange. And this is green, okay. So for Play World, that's $12 a day plus $2 per ride. Um, the slope would be two, because it's per ride. We'll let X be number of rides. We don't know. And it costs $12 just to get in. So 2x plus 12. And then for the Great Action Park, um, it's $4 per ride. But it only costs $2 to get in. And so if I was to graph this, um, 2x plus 12, I would start at 12. And then I would go up to, now this counts as two because it's 12 to 14. I'd go up to over one. Hopefully that's a day, I gotta go down here. Oh, I almost messed up. So they're doing rides being, for some reason, two spaces. That makes no sense. You're not gonna go on a half a ride. So I have no idea why they put halves in here. But let's see, if I go, let's see, yeah, X is number of rides, okay. So if I go up to, over one, that's actually two spaces. Because I went two rides up, or I'm sorry, two dollars up, one ride over. And then if I was to continue that, it's really one, two. So it'd be one, two. And again, start at $12 and then go up $2 for every ride, which is what I did. Went up $2 for every ride. They just so happened to make one ride two spaces for some reason. And then the other one starts at two. Starts at $2 and we go up $4 per ride. So $4, that'd be two, four per ride right here. So this one's really two over two, and then go up two over two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. right there. So we just found, um, for what number of rides will the cost be the same after five rides? Now, for what range of rides would you want to visit Play World? Well, Play World is the green one. And so I would say you would want to visit Play World after five rides, because it's gonna be lower than this one. And it may help to, to graph that. So 
orange is great action. Uh, green is play world. So you're going to want to go to great action, great action, great action, great action, great action until you get the five rides. And then I would go to play world. So um, for great action, I would say under five rides. Or equal, it could be equal. And then for what range would you visit Play World over five rides? So if you're just wanting to like pop into the park and ride a couple rides, uh, let's go to Great Action. If you want to spend a whole day there, then you should probably go to Play World. Okay, and I know these um, aren't, they don't seem very realistic, but uh, let's see. Chatted me. What does it mean, range of months? Um, range would be a, a number. So you would say um, for what range of rides? It could be zero rides, one ride, two rides, three rides, four rides, five rides. So between zero and five, we would go to Play World. Or I'm sorry. Maybe it's a zoo and they have moths. Maybe. Uh, for what? So play world would be five or over. So I could say um, X is bigger than five. Like if I wrote this out in math, I could say if X is number of rides, right? I could say when X is bigger than or equal to five. And then if I was talking about orange, I would say X is less than or equal to five. And it's kind of a tricky statement because usually when we talk about range, we're referring to the Y value, but they specifically asked. Um, and then, you know, I just read the problem. Um, so for what range of rides would you visit Play World over five rides? And I failed to read the question for what range of months. Um, so you would say, let's see, for months, months for um, great action, which is orange, we would say 22 for what range of months? Yeah, that that's, doesn't make any sense. For what range of months? Because we don't know, we just don't know number of rides and cost. So for what range of rides, we'll change that to rides. We don't know months, that's weird. That's a typo. But I make these kind of decisions myself. Um, which cell phone plan should I pick? So like for me, I pick a cell phone plan that doesn't charge um, much per month. I don't use very much data. And so the cell phone plan I have, and I won't advertise here, I only pay like $40 a month for. Whereas I have friends who they pay $100 a month and that makes sense for them because they use tons of data. Okay, so um, these are real life applications. Now, if you joined our class later, I just want to reiterate, or maybe you weren't listening earlier, that if you are fully virtual, which most of you are, you need to sign up for a time to take that first unit test. Um, notice the first day of September 22nd, I should be through the material by then. Um, so you have between September 22nd and October 5th. Um, I would go ahead and secure your spot because of social distancing and stuff. Um, if you want a good time, I would pick, I would go ahead and schedule it now and add it to your calendar. So just want to make sure you all knew that. All right, well, if there's no other questions, I need to sign off of here and sign into my office hours. That is another link under Zoom. So you can see um, my office hours already started. So I need to sign off of here. And if you have questions or you need more help, just sign on to there and I'll be there. But other than that, have a good day. Nice seeing you all.